Junkies, and we got an episode for you. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the Canucks. We got some UFC to go over. Uh, our best bets from from the UFC as well. Uh, we've got the basketball signings that happened. Uh, what else we got, Ty? Um. Well, there's a lot going on right now. Actually, we could. Uh, you know, there was a big F1 race on the weekend um there's some nfl news like you said the nba we can uh we can get into that there's some big rumors about kevin durant potentially yeah. coming to uh toronto which would be pretty crazy i don't know if it's gonna happen insane. but we'll see i think that would be insane and you know it's it's happened before right with uh Kawhi. got them a ring helped get them a ring so yeah but yeah lots lots of stuff to get into here um what uh what are you guys drinking tonight dan let's start with you uh what did i what did i do with my beer i sat on the oh here it is hold on just getting uh my good old molson canadian right here that's that bad boy that's a budweiser dan <laughs> he's drunk that's, how, that's how much uh that's how much beer i i i, I drink i i'm i'm getting mixed up with my names here a budweiser now, are you having america's beer because it was just um independence day july 4th july 4th is yesterday so a little uh cheers to everyone celebrating uh july 4th i didn't see any uh hands blown off in the nfl i guess jason pierre paul has been uh you know taking it low with the last few years on july 4th <laughs> yeah yeah Ty, how about you there. that's I good see you're uh already you know always in vacation mode you got your uh old green uh junkies it's- beater on it's um it's hot man it's actually a nice day out there so uh but i am not actually having a drink which is not going to be a popular take i am having a starbucks iced coffee because uh been on a little bit of a bender lately uh just taking a couple days off through the week maybe later we'll see we'll see what happens what are you drinking i'm drinking a spinnaker's uh local here um i'm in uh Langford, BC today. So that's just a little bit north of uh, Victoria. And uh, Spinnaker's is uh, kind of the local, uh, you know, brewery. It's very, very good. Um, so cheers. What kind of beer is that? You got the lager or? It's, uh, yes, it's a lager. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Cool. So, cheerio. You- Cheers, boys, and uh, you guys might notice we're missing someone this episode here. Mike was having Somebody some... Uh... Tech- technologically um, <laughs> behind in the times. Some technical difficulties uh, with the app, but he will be uh, joining us later uh, via maybe GoPro, you know? We don't know. It's going to happen at some point, point. Um, and he's going to break down the the UFC that happened this past weekend. Um Actually, I don't think any of us. Did you guys catch it? The UFC? No, I didn't, but I know I know he did because uh, I was talking to him while he was watching and uh, he was getting really excited on the phone. So, Yeah, no, I saw a lot of the results. Um, I know Mike was pretty happy. I think he hit another parlay. Money Mike coming through again for uh, the listeners. Hopefully you guys play some bets. But, but yeah, I saw some of the results. Nothing too surprising uh, that I thought. How about you, Dan? Did you see any of the results there that happened? No, uh, I was I was with you, Ty. We had uh, a birthday yeah, party meant, on Saturday. You didn't night. you didn't see anything on like Sports I didn't see Center? Or... No, no, no. I saw a little oh, bit okay. of the highlights. I know Cerrone retired. Thank God. I mean, he got I think choked out and finally decided that he was done. So I'm sure Mike will be giving his recap. But yeah, I know he hit his parlay. That's two in a row. 
uh, two big pay-per-views in a row for him. So, uh, yeah, like you said, hopefully the listeners have been listening and have been <laughs> locking in Money Mike's uh, guaranteed picks for the UFC. Easy money. Absolutely, yeah. So he will uh, he'll break that down for us in a bit. But uh, we can switch gears here. And uh, I was pretty happy to read some Canuck breaking news um, this past weekend. We had talked about it last episode. We were debating whether we would rather keep Besser or Miller if it came down to it. And we know we're keeping one of them right now, at least for the next few years. What do you guys think about the... Sorry? What did I say? What did I say? Remember? I said keep them both. He said keep them both. This is what's going to happen. Still a possibility. Um, I've I've been reading there's a lot of interest, obviously, from a lot of teams on uh, the Miller front. And one team I heard, I don't know if it's true, is the Devils. And they're intriguing because they have the number two overall pick in this year's draft. So I wonder if that's something that could be in play because that would be awesome. <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. Eh? Yeah. yeah, but you think they're, well, you're going to have to package something else, Miller and maybe another uh, younger player to get the number two overall. I don't think no, so. not necessarily. No, man. Miller is highly coveted right now from what all these uh, insiders are saying. Well, didn't uh, Nashville give up Fiala? And they got a pretty high draft pick. Fiala? Fiala? Minis- Minnesota gave Was up. Was it Minnesota? Fiala. No. Oh, Minnesota to, had him, yeah. To, to LA. Yeah, yeah. And they, got, they got a draft pick, a first-round pick, and a top prospect for him. Yeah, so you so would have I mean, to think Miller's value is a little higher than Fiala. For sure. In my opinion. But yeah, uh, it could happen this week if it's going to happen because the draft is obviously this Thursday. So we'll see that'd what happens. That would be insane. That would be insane. I know. And we already have had a pretty big trade with the Devils uh, in the last 10 years. The Corey Schneider deal to get the the pick that turned into Horvat, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, back to the, the Besser deal. What do you guys think? It was uh, three years for 6.65 mil. Good, good bridge deal is, uh, is the way that I'm looking at this. He'll, he'll either <clears throat> make it or break it now, right? If, he's, if he fizzes out, I mean, yeah, it no, is what absolutely. It is. But if he lights the world on fire, then we got a little bit of thinking to do after that, right? So. Yeah, no, I like it. And it was cheaper than I think his qualifying offer. If he was to sign, it would have been over 7 mil. So the yeah, Canucks did a, good in this yeah, negotiation. He took a little bit of a, yeah, he took a little bit of a hometown discount, right? Yeah. He wants to stay here. He wants to be here. He want, He loves the team. He loves the guys. I mean, why not? Uh, yeah, I guess he, you know, these, and, and again, it, it works for him as well. He's just got to perform. Yeah. Definitely. And we've talked about it. He had a tough year last year. He had a lot of, uh, you know, personal things going on with his dad and, you know, family stuff. And he still battled through it. And, you know, he had a decent year, but he had, you know, a, decent think, yeah, he had a decent year. Um, but, you know, with that uh, sort of burden, I mean, he's still obviously, still obviously going to hurt, but I mean, he's not going to be dealing with that, you know, during the season. So I don't know. I think he's going to have a bounce back here. Uh, the Canucks are betting on it too. And, and I totally agree. I think it was a great bridge deal. And you know what? That is a deal that Mr. Benning would not have been able to uh, make work. Here's 10 years at 9 million. Yeah. No trade clause. <laughs> no uh, trade clause. Give away our entire salary cap for one player. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I've heard- it's, a good, it's a good move. It was a good move. And it shows what, uh, it shows what we have for a management team here now. Right. Yeah, totally agree. They they can make the deal. A so. competent management group here that uh, can make something ha- make some things happen. But uh, yeah, no, I'm excited about it, and I also have a Besser jersey, so I was uh, happy in that regard. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to be the curse again that lost another uh, Canuck player jersey. I so. like me with Sundin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a collector's item, man. There's not no. many of those in circulation out in the world. Uh, Oh man, it's almost as good as my Luongo with the C on it. Yeah, that destroyed his career as a captain. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is also a collector's item, Dan. I like it. But so yeah, there's what's been this rumor. Yeah, what's go ahead? What's, what's sorry? What's this rumor about uh, Malkin? 
And the Canucks. Being, being tied to the Canucks. Yeah, what's that about? Ah, man, I don't know. Like, would we even want him? I, what would he get paid? Like, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, I think a lot of Penguins players that are up, um, there's been some rumblings out of there that I think Latang even, they're, uh, they're far apart on contract negotiations. And I mean, you know, Rutherford uh, and Alvin have that connection with Pittsburgh. So I think you're going to hear these type of things. Is there any truth to it? I don't know. I know Mike would be really excited. Well, Mike would be creaming his pants if he was on this call right now. <laughs> but no, I have heard that. I don't know if there's any truth to it or any seriousness to it, but I mean, if we could get him at the right price, but I think he's probably got one decent contract left at him, right? I don't think he's going to take a deal to come to Vancouver. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? He's definitely not going to take discounts. He's, I don't think he needs, I think he's set in terms of, you know, uh, trophies and, uh, and cups. So he's wanting the money. And, and honestly, I think it would be stupid. Yeah, for sure. It'd be awesome. Hindsight, if we were to get Malks, but it's going to cost us pretty much everything. We are going to need to do like a five year, you know, 10 plus mil per year in order to get him. Yeah. I don't think uh, we, uh, like you said, I don't think is, we're going to be his last big uh, contract. So he's going to want the money. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't about, think we're if it was about the cups and if it was about you know uh, sticking to the core, he would be signing, you know, a uh, you know hometown discount in Pittsburgh. But obviously, that's off the table. So he wants money. It's his last big contract, and I don't see a team other in. I, I mean, I don't see Vancouver doing it. It would be stupid yeah. if we did it. Well, yeah, I think it's a move you make if you're more of a contender. And we I don't mm -hmm. think we're a contender yet. I think we're still in that kind of middle phase where we're not sure if we're trying to rebuild or retool. And I think that's what we want to see from this management group, right? Because um, I think we need, we need to get younger. Our prospect pool is not that good. That's why I'm excited about hearing these rumblings about, uh, you know, potential trade with New Jersey. Because we if we bring back the same core as last year i mean do you think we have a stanley cup winning team or a team that can compete not, for it not after not after watching colorado play that's what i mean right so it's like i want to see some things shaken up i mean there's gonna have to be some uncomfortable decisions made like we all like these players like i've heard rumors about horvat too um he could be on the move. I mean, this, this week is going to be really interesting uh, leading up to the draft. Um, and then obviously just before free agency opens. So I don't know. I, I still want to see some things change, even though we had a pretty good run under, uh, under Bruce there, Bruce, there it is when he came in, like you said, Govic, I don't think uh, after watching Colorado, we are far, far away from competing with that team in a seven game series. Well, um, I mean, the, the changes again, there was changes made again this week on coaching staff. So Bradshaw's out, Mike Yo's in. Um, yeah. th yep. That's a pretty significant assistant coach piece, I think. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a name we've we've heard head coach in the league, a few different teams you were saying. I only Minnesota, really remember in St. Minnesota, Louis, yeah. 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 So, I mean, he's been, he's, you know, Mike yo has been around greatness um hasn't been a part of it but he's he's always there a year there a year later or whatever um he kind of touches it all the time so uh i think he's yeah as an assistant coach that's that's a pretty bold move and um yeah i think uh i think he's gonna help bruce out oh yeah i i agree but i just think i don't know we need to do something a little more drastic, which we've talked about, but, and that number two pick, if we can get a deal done with New Jersey, there's uh there's some studs up there. What what a pick do we hold currently right now in the first round? 15. Oh, okay. And that's, you know, that's kind of like a, I don't know. It's a lottery ticket, right? It's a player that's not going to be in the league for a few years. Um, well, not necessarily. We, well, most likely. Um, like a, the top three are looks like they're almost NHL ready. Shane writes, uh, he was the slam dunk consensus, consensus number one pick, but, uh, 
there's another kid that's emerged. He was MVP of the Olympics. Uh, what's his name? Slavkovsky. You guys heard of him? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So he's, it's right now it's sounding like it's a coin flip between one and two. And then we know that Montreal holds the first pick. Hey, eh? what the luck they have hosting the draft and they get the number one pick. Well, I mean, next year's draft is the big one, right? Connor Bedard. True. But I mean, you're there, you're getting a, a really, really good player in this draft in the top two. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> come on guys. Like, who went first overall when the Sedins got picked? What was his name? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't. Oh, yeah. Patrick Stefan. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mike picked him every year in the hockey pool and destroyed his career. And then remember <laughs> Alexi Yashin? He went first overall. Was he very good? No. Di Pietro? I don't think he went first. But, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just, no, for sure. You well, know, even look at re- recently um, the Kale McCarr draft year. Uh, Nico. Or or whatever for uh, the Devils took first overall. I think Makar went fourth. Yeah, I think they'd want to redo on that draft right about I think now. A lot of people would want to redo on that draft because uh, when where did Quinn Hughes drop to? Oh yeah, and I think he went sixth. Yeah. So I mean, sixth for that guy. Yeah, yeah. Hinds- hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. Oh yeah. But- but yeah, anyways, at, at fifteen, I don't think we're getting. Uh, we should get a decent obviously a decent young player that hopefully will help in a few years but i don't know we'll see what happens we'll see we'll see what happens this is time so this is this is where alvin and and um uh rutherford they they can put their stamp on this team right they can make some big moves here and if they do that and if they're ready to do that then let's see what happens you know what who cares i mean <laughs> yeah it was a pretty a pretty uh you know not bad season last year but guys this is this has been a terrible team for a long time. Somebody new is coming in with new uh, uh, philosophies and new ways of doing business. Go ahead, do it. Go and do it. Do it. Show yeah, us I, what you can do. Fuck. You know. I agree. And we still have this uh, solid young core to build around. We just need to find the right pieces. Yeah. To put with them. It's right? always about the pieces. It's always about the, you got the good goal. You got the good goal. You got him at a bargain. Thank you, Jim. That was pretty good. Yeah. You got him at a pretty pretty good price. And now you you just need to build the pieces around the goalie, and and you've got some some core players around there. You got the stud D, you got uh, you know a couple of good centermen. Like now now move it around a little bit. Do your magic, Rutherford. Just and no now, more uh, Tucker Pullmans and and those types. Tyler you know? Myers is and and <laughs> G- Beagles and all those guys. <laughs> like get yeah, those guys yeah. out of here. I agree. I want to see some action uh, this week leading up to the draft but oh i'm sure there will be some action i i can i there will be some action will we be involved who knows but there will definitely be some action and oh yeah, uh, yeah i want some canuck action that's what i meant yeah oh yeah i i i feel like uh <clears throat> i feel like that's that's going to be a, a given i hear tyler myers is on the market yep yeah, it sounds like they're listening on pretty much everyone uh, outside of obviously uh, our young core. I mean, who knows? They could be listening on like Pedersen and stuff, but I don't see Pedersen, obviously, or Hughes going anywhere, obviously, right? So, but we will see. We will see. So, another big move today was um, uh, the San Jose Sharks have um, hired Mike Greer as their gm uh huge move you know, obviously big move with with uh with the departures of departure of what's his face last year uh needed a gm they did their homework and mike greer who came up as the best person to hire now great hockey my great player like he was he was a good player um, yeah, yeah do you remember him ty in nhl with trev yeah yeah i do i do so I know, uh, scored a lot of goals with him on Trav. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So he played for Nashville. He played for San Jose. Where else did he play? Played uh, uh, he bounced around a bit later in his he did career. Bounce around, yeah. I mean, well, he's um, kind of like that depth guy that playoff teams would uh, look, look for acquire. at the deadline. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, you know, 
Um, so he'll be taking on San Jose, who is, you know, they're not at their peak anymore, obviously. So um, let's see what Mike Greer, um, <clears throat> what Mike Greer can do. Um, you know, he's, he's not Canadian. He's American. He's born in, uh, in Detroit. Uh, so he's, just, he's an East coast guy. He was drafted by the blues. Um, but he did, he played for, Oh, sorry. He never played for Nashville. He played for, um, Buffalo, the caps, he played for the Oilers and the sharks. Mm. So, um, I'm not sure why I said, uh, why I said Nashville, but he did, uh, he did, uh, get drafted by the, the by the blues overall with 2,200 and hold on, let's see here. He was drafted. So we were talking about draft picks a few minutes ago here. He was drafted 219th overall. 219th oh, wow. overall, solid NHL career. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and to boot, he's the first um, first black general manager in the NHL ever. So that's yeah, that a pretty is, cool thing as well. It's, it's crazy that it's taken that long, but uh, it's awesome. Good for yeah. him. Breaking barriers. Yeah, no. Breaking barriers is wicked. It's always good. So congratulations to him and congratulations to the Sharks. And let's see what he can what he can do. That Sharks team, you know, they've they got some he's got it. some work to do. Well, no, but talk to like were the, are the Sharks like the most underachieving NHL team ever? Like they were good for so long. And they just couldn't even in 2011, you know, the Canucks, it was it was not, it was supposed to be a tighter series than it was. And um, the Canucks just put them away. It kind of like yep. it kind of reminds me of the Senators. You know, the Senators were so good, and they just couldn't couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Yeah, but we and, also did not win a cup either. No, they I know. Can say but the it's, same thing about us. But yeah, they were competitive for such a long they time. They were competitive for like ten to fifteen years. We're talking about here, guys. Oh, the Thornton and Marlowe and the yeah. Pavelski combo. Um, that Brent Burns came up. Yeah, no. I agree. That's a, it seems like a missed opportunity for that team, just like it was for our Canucks though. So we can't bash them too much. Oh yeah. But <laughs> still no. Okay. Greer. Let's see what you can do, man. Get it done. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So Dan, uh, well, um, switching gears here. Uh, you're talking earlier before we started uh, recording here about all the money being thrown around in the NBA this off season. Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's getting up to that time now. Like, we just finished, I think, our last uh, sports uh, league to watch with the Stanley Cup run, uh, wrapping up. The NBA Finals was, like, a week before that. Um, but, yeah, insane contracts. I can't believe the NBA, like, the money that they're giving to these contracts. Like, it seems like the minimum go-to is, you know, $200 million over five years. And, you know, some of these names like uh, Booker uh, out of Phoenix signed four year, 220 million. Um, uh, uh, Levine out of the Bulls, 250 million. All these are five year contracts. Uh, the Well, I'm going to leave that one for last, uh, Govic, just for oh, you. Sorry. Uh, Zion, Williamson, Zion, know, Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson. Yeah. Or Zion Williamson, you know, 193. He's only 21. Five year deal extension on his rookie contract, 193 million. I know, man. NBA money is different, though. That's uh, it's insane. It's... And then, and then, yeah, Govica, your uh, buddy, the Joker um, out of Denver, uh, Jokic signed 270 million over five years. Why is Jokic my buddy? I, I don't know. Did you You're think he's asking. Croatian? Did yeah. you think he was Croatian? Because he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's Serbian. Uh, uh, well he's that he's been the nba mvp for uh i think it was like two years in a row <laughs> hey, he's a, he's so, a monster, man. last he's year a for sure, yeah. yeah yeah so i think yeah these contracts are just insane well, yeah. i think the biggest okay. talk right now is in the off season is who hasn't been signed and is requesting a trade out of brooklyn uh kevin durant and uh yeah some of the teams are obviously <laughs> you know, loading up the vault, uh, ready to drop a Brinks truck as well as everything they own to get him. I mean, uh, Miami wants him. They got a huge package deal. Um, 
There's talks about the Phoenix Suns really pushing for the last. There's few not years a with team in the NBA that doesn't want him. It's just a matter of but, like where he's willing to go. Well, for one. he's willing yeah. to go exactly and the best I, deal. Yeah, but I think uh, well the Raptors they're in the mix. Uh, I mean they made it. They made a, a home run swing with um, uh, Kawhi, Kawhi. Leonard, you know, and a it few worked. Years ago. And it worked. It worked. Got them the championship. So um, yeah, we'll see in the coming weeks what what is going to drop for uh, Durant and where he's going to sign. But yeah, so there was already. Uh, so you're talking about all the signings now. Every player you listed there is essentially a star, right? So. In the NBA, the stars or the faces of the franchise are going to get paid, right? And so those are like the super max deals. But there's a there's a ton of deals that were you know under the radar that are you know a little still more big, reasonable, big. still big because NBA obviously there's a lot more money there, um, TV deals and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we we're talking about Durant and what it would take to get him. So there was one big trade uh, this past week. The uh, the Timberwolves acquired Rudy Gobert, uh, star center from utah they got four players like solid nba players and four first round picks for rudy gobert like that is insane so now you talk about that and then you think about what a team would want in return for kevin durant yeah and uh yeah. it could get it could get ridiculous so i hope the raptors uh you know are seriously in the mix and can put something together but i mean would you be willing to mortgage your future for another title lots of people would say yes i think i probably would be one of those i mean if you can bring durant up there and win another title like they did with Kawhi, why not yeah i mean i mean if it puts you back five six years oh well yeah if you get a title like talking about the championship for five six years exactly can you imagine if i i keep going back to us as canuck fans different sport obviously but if we would have just got that cup it wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be so disgruntled and so angry all the time talking about our team. We probably would still love Jim Benning if we had got a cup back in the day. Who cares? We got a Stanley Cup. It's kind of oh, like no, how we are with think, the Seahawks now. I don't now. think Gillis would ever got him fired. He'd be here forever. Yeah, yeah, true. That's what I mean, though, right? Huh. So, like, it, it, compare it to the NHL. Would be we would we be willing to mortgage our future by trading away everyone, or not everyone, but for say Connor McDavid? bunch of first round picks and yes right probably yeah although <laughs> mcdavid um you know he can't do it by himself clearly he yeah, almost of course did. he almost did this year but yeah not everyone but i'm just trying to compare it to it right like would yeah. you um like if i was a raptors fan I, i've been reading a lot on on twitter and stuff and it seems pretty split actually it's like probably, I don't know, 50, 50, the fans who want that to happen. And those that don't, um, based on what they know they would have to give up. Right. So yeah. Speaking of like Vancouver here, here's a question. Would you, uh, what would you trade for, uh, the Vancouver Grizzlies to come back here? What would I trade? Yeah, that we currently have as a city. The BC Lions and the Whitecaps. Oh, come <laughs> yeah. on. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> what you asked, that's my offer. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> what would I do? Yeah. Um, or what I would, would you give up? I would give up. Uh, what would I do? I'd probably give up um, Surrey. They can have it. <laughs> okay. And um, and Mission. They can go. They can be a part of their <laughs> own city and not a part of Vancouver. And then we could get, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'd give up. Would I like to see them back? Yes. But I'm... Uh, I'm so mad at the NBA for the, for the way that the Grizz... What happened there. I just, I can't like, you know... We were so excited when they came to town. Do you remember? Do you guys remember? You guys a little? Yeah, I was super young, but I went to a ton of games. So did I, because people didn't want to go to games. The free tickets were always free. <clears throat> for uh, for my birthday one year, Dave and I went. My parents got me tickets uh, behind the Lakers bench, like three oh, wow. rows back. Saw Kobe. It was awesome. I uh, wore full head to toe yellow Laker gear, and uh, Super Grizz came over. Remember the mascot? Grab my yeah. hat. 
rubbed it on his ass and put it back on my head and I was on the big screen. Never forget mm-hmm. it. But uh, no, man, I went to a ton of games. It was a lot of fun. And you know, I'm holding out hope they could be back at some point soon. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from Galtus Lake for the UFC update. UFC 276. Mike, over to you. All right. Last Saturday night, the UFC 276 went down at Asanya versus Cannoneer. It was a great card. And again, if you're following along, I went five for five. That's two and two UFCs in a row. We're hamming them out. I hope you're betting along with me and making some money. I went perfect again. Don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm sure Dan, he's uh, he's proud of me for sure. The first fight of the night was uh, Pedro Munoz versus the Sugar Show Sean O'Malley. This fight ended in a no contest due to an eye poke. And a lot of people were saying on Twitter and stuff like that that Munoz was winning the fight. Pedro was not winning that fight. Uh, Sean O'Malley was absolutely dominating him, in my opinion. He was um, he was a lot quicker than him, put, put on a lot more damage. It almost looked like Munoz was looking for a way out of the fight. And the Sugar Joe after the fight was saying that. So he felt as well. Um, the eye poke, I, it's, I mean, it did not look like it was that bad while the fight was going on, but who knows? They said that he couldn't see, and no one wants to see that, you know, the fight end that way. Um, Pedro was definitely, you know, he brought the right game plan. He was, you know, using those front leg kicks. O'Malley was checking them, but um, the quickness and the, uh, well, just the quickness of Sean O'Malley, man. He's, just, he's, he's unbelievable in there, and he was picking him apart, and uh, he landed some big shots. A um, little bit of showboating, but not as much as he usually does because of uh, he's got to have he definitely had respect for Pedro and he needed to because he was definitely a step up in competition. Going forward from here for, for the Sugar Show, I don't think he's going to run us one back. I think we're going to see him now fight like a top five guy, which is um, what I want to see for sure. The second fight of the night was uh, Robbie Lawler versus Brian. Barbarina. We picked Barbarina. It was just gonna. This was a pick 'em, and um, it, I think I took Barbarina to be a decision, but uh, he ended up knocking out Robbie Lawler in the second round, and it was a great fight. Robbie Lawler looked fantastic for being 40 years old. This guy, I mean, he looked. I can't believe the damage this guy's taken, and he and he delivers still. And Barbarina, man, hats off to that guy. He he ate some big shots, and kept moving forward. And got the W. The third part of the night was the much anticipated Alex Pereira versus Sean Strickland. Again, it was down to this was a pick 'em. And it was, uh, I came down to the fight IQ to me. Do we, are we going to see this Strickland come in the middle of the octagon and bang with a world championship kickboxer like Alex Pereira? And that's what he did. He was leading up to the fight that week. He was saying that uh, no kickboxer is going to, you know, you know, he's not going to shy away from any kickboxer in, in the octagon. It's MMA and and this and that. This guy is a brown belt in Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He didn't even try taking him down one time in this fight. And what happened? He ended up getting himself knocked out in round number two, I think it was. Or maybe it was round number one. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, exactly what was going to happen if uh, you want to bang this guy. There's huge hype around uh, Pereira in the fact that he's, he's beaten um, – um, Adesanya twice and knocked him out cold when in a kickboxing match. And um, for the Izzy fight, he was sitting front row. See what was going on. He obviously called out after the fight that he wanted a, a chance at the at the belt. And um, he's definitely put himself in the in the front of the line for sure. Um, he did not disappoint. The two title fights of the night, we had Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway, the featherweight championship. And my God, Volkanovsky looked unbelievable. He comes in, he was being booed. He was he had a chip on his shoulder and he absolutely dominated Max Holloway, which is a tough thing to do. Max Holloway is a tough dude. He was absolutely beat up, cut up. His, uh, one of the nastiest cuts I've ever seen over someone's eye. And he's still come out there and moving forward. Um, you know, Max Holloway is a super tough dude, and Volkanovski just looked absolutely unbelievable. Now, I mean, who's next for Volkanovski? He's taken on every every 
everyone out in the featherweight division, including Max Holloway, three times. So we can't see a fourth. Uh, not after that performance. He, you know, he just absolutely looked on another level. We're going to see Volkanovski probably go for two belts. I would say he might go up for the lightweight belt. Um, and I hope he does because this guy is a tank, man. At 33 years old, he's getting it done. All right, the main event of the evening, we had Israel Adesanya versus Jared Cannonier for the middleweight championship of the world. And it was, we picked Adesanya to win via decision. And that is what happened. We basically won every single round. And one judge gave one round to Jared Cannonier. Um, Izzy just picked him apart for the entire 25 minutes. And um, it's kind of a boring fight back and forth. I mean, just, Israel understanding putting on a clinic, um, but uh, Cannonier wasn't able to get anything going, wasn't able to get him against the fence, wasn't able to land any power shots. So Izzy does it again. Um, and obviously after the fight calls out, they ask what's next for him. And it's for sure going to be Alex Pereira versus Israel Adesanya. That's going to be a fun fight to break down. It's going to be lots, uh, you know, Israel Adesanya is not really a wrestler. It doesn't really take people down. So it's going to be a, a, a to me, it's going to be a kickboxing match and uh, probably not going to end well for Israel Adesanya. I mean, from if history has anything to uh, to do with it, we'll, uh, but it's going to be a fun fight to break down, a fun fight to watch, and I look forward to it. Also, this, this month we have, on the 30th of July, uh, UFC 277, Pena versus Nunez 2 going at it. Obviously, uh, Pena shocked the world by knocking out Amanda Nunez, finishing her, and she wants to solidify that belt. So that's going to be a fun fight, and we will break it down for you as we always do. So, uh, guys, I don't know if you've been uh, following some of the news coming out of the MLS. I'm really searching for sports to watch right now. I'm not much of a baseball player. So, uh, um, with Italy not qualifying for the Euro Cup, it's, or sorry, World Cup, it seems that a lot of the players are looking uh, at the MLS. So, uh, yeah, there was a big signing uh, a couple of days ago, about a week ago. Uh, Lorenzo Insigni uh, came over to Toronto FC. Um, and they've also are in the process of making room for Frederico Bernardeschi, who just had his contract uh, expire with Juventus. And he's a pretty decent young player, 28 years old. He won the uh, 2020 Euro with Italy. And, you know, they're starting to shake things up. It's pretty exciting to see uh, some of these big names now coming to MLS. I know the big talk... I think in the next year or two, uh, Messi, it sounds like when his contract is up, um, he's going to be looking at coming to the MLS. And I'm pretty sure not far down the road, uh, you know, maybe we see Ronaldo. Uh, they were saying out. Miami, right? For Messi, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to go play uh, for, yeah, in uh, Miami's, Miami's team. Uh, obviously, Beckham has got uh, some pull and he's got some, uh, you know, big names that probably want to come play for his team. Um, so that'd be pretty crazy. Of course, just like anything in Vancouver, I don't think the Whitecaps have done anything. Yeah, why the hell can't we get one of these designated sort of stars from Europe or whatever? Is it because of our uh, still turf? It's probably the issues? turf. It's probably the weather, uh, the gas. Hell, gas prices. They're, they're not going to want to come here and you know take the bus. So you know we're getting desperate for sports when we're talking MLS. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with the MLS. I mean, it's fun to go to some games here and there. But I think the Whitecaps well, have actually okay, been playing not, better lately, talk, right? Okay, let's let's change the subject and not talk MLS. Christian <laughs> requested a trade. Okay, he requested to be traded out of Manchester United. He wants his final seasons as a professional footballer. As these are his words. Uh, mm -hmm. to be competing for the Champions League. And he does not see, or, or to competing to be competing for the Champions League title. And he does not see himself competing for a Champions League title with, with the Manchester United. United club. And I don't blame him. Um, so we'll see where he ends up. Um, but he will be uh, gone out of Manchester United, which is completely fine with me. I am okay with that. I love Ronaldo. I... You guys know we've talked about this before. The, the difference between Ronaldo and Messi for me, I think Ronaldo's better. He's just a more complete player. Um, watch for a big team to be picking him up uh, come the next season. 
Did he say where he wants to go? He didn't mention it where he wants to go, but he said How about Bayern. Oh man, would that? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I, I don't even know what I do. Oh, that would be unreal. You guys would never win in FIFA against against me ever again if I got Ronaldo on the team. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty crazy though. It'll be interesting to see where he goes then. He figure he he probably has a list. He hasn't said like of teams. He said he wants to go to a contender that he can. Oh, win go with, right? you're gonna get a little uh, a little excited. You might uh, bust out of your suit here. Um, Ronaldo is willing to take a considerable pay cut to fulfill his wish of a Champions uh, League challenger. Um, top teams include Chelsea, PSG, and Bayern. Oh. It cannot be Chelsea. I don't think it could be PSG. I, I can't see him playing in France. But I can see him playing in the Bundesliga, buddy. Okay? The Bundesliga is legit. For the French League is, you know, it's getting there. But the Bundesliga is legit, man. Legit. So. Him and Lewandowski <laughs> in the front. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, man, would that be a team? All they would need to do is get Luka Modric in the midfield. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my God. You can dream, yeah. Agovic. We'll see if it happens for you. I can dream. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of some soccer news here, did you guys see what I sent uh, I sent to our group a couple of days ago that uh, they're what introducing the yeah, they're introducing a new ball for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Um, it has a tracking device for semi-automated offside technology. Um, apparently it has 12 cameras to track the ball and up to 29 data points of each individual player's limbs and extremities. So a lot of those close offside calls that everyone likes to freak out about, uh, they might have this to turn to for those really really close calls and uh you know i don't i don't know if i like it how accurate is this thing gonna be it's gonna have some pissed off people either way on this one what do you think uh i hope the technology <laughs> doesn't get ru- doesn't ruin it but i think it'll be good so yeah. dan hopefully it speeds up the play i mean the fact that right now currently Five minutes after the fact, the red light can go on, the flag can be waved, and then the ref goes and checks the uh, iPad and then calls the playback 50 yards. Oh, that was offside, or that was a handball. So if it, be, if it speeds up the play and it doesn't you know, impact the integrity of the game too much by having now all these computers making the decisions, at the end of the day, that was the one naturally good thing about you know, uh, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it was all about the ref making this decision live and in play what he saw, he saw what he did. Well, that sucks. It's only obviously as technology and you have these jumbo screens, you've got, you know, sports center replays, blah, blah, blah. That obviously now I guess they have to adapt. They have to come up with this technology as long as it doesn't impact the game too much. And the calls are still the right calls. I mean, you're going to have this ball now that can do all these pinging and uh, light up when it's offside. As long as they can still go to the replay and determine that, yeah, it is offside. It wasn't some ball malfunction because, uh, yeah. you know, Ellen Musk uh, decided to go on an app and create something. Yeah, what to... if <laughs> the first thing I thought of when I saw this is someone's going to hack it. Yeah, tampering with this. Where the battery's <laughs> dying and it doesn't yeah. give you a good signal or something yeah. like that. But I don't know. I you thought... know what they do with the pucks? They do it with the pucks, or they did it with pucks. They have yeah. the smart pucks now. You can, it tells you how fast the puck is going and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But they I don't mean, rely I, on that for. I oh, mean, I, I did some. I did plays. a little bit of on the fly. Hold on, I did a little bit of on the fly research here on Ronaldo. <laughs> uh, so the favorite. We've talked about time. soccer way too long. First of all, hold on, and I'll, I'll hold on, hold on. The favorites to sign Cristiano Ronaldo are Bayern Munich. At two oh, to one. Boy. Oh, this guy's not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm <laughs> not. The second is Chelsea. Hmm. And the third is Roma. So you can play with oh, Mourinho. Wow. 
fourth is PSG and fifth is Real Madrid. So I'm good with number Ro- one and number Roma. Five. Do they uh, do they have a good team right now? Uh they're yeah. I mean the Italian leagues. The Italian league is always good. But yeah, yeah, but I mean a Champion League contender. Yeah, I don't know. They... Jose Mourinho is there, so maybe. Look mm-hmm. what he did with Inter, right? Against Bayern. Interesting. In Mexico, interesting. when I was with Nick, I'll never drink a pina colada again that, after that day. <laughs> oh my god! I remember that you guys came back and you were being a rascal on the beach. I was throwing sand around, and then I ended up in the bathroom <laughs> for three days because of all that ice I drank in that pina colada. So, oh fuck! <laughs> I've never had white stool before, like. Too much that? info, man. <laughs> we're trying sorry, to man. we're trying That's to gain terrible. listeners, not lose them. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. But, man, <laughs> but is I'm is not... Messi still signed for next year? Or is his contract expires this coming? I think he's. I don't know. I think. He's can you imagine him. if Ronaldo goes to PSG? You got Ronaldo. You got Messi. You no, got Neymar. You can't have that. You can't have that. There's there's oh, he's three to take a pay there. Cut. There's three egos there. Too that... many big personalities there. Yeah. So Ronaldo. Ronaldo's style with the way he acts with his teammates is something that, you know, he calls people out and he calls himself out too, but he calls people out if they're not doing, can you imagine him calling out Neymar? Like Neymar, <laughs> like it would just be, it wouldn't be good. It just wouldn't be good. Or Messi calling out Messi. He, he has the right to, he has the right to call both those guys out with track records when it comes to it, down to it. He has that much respect, but again, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, he can go to Bayern and Alfonso Davies can play with uh, with him and make feed him some passes, feed him some balls. I think uh, I think that's that's the best bet world and everything. Just please do that. Okay. <laughs> I am getting enough Bayern Ronaldo jersey, buddy. Oh. Mm. So we'll see. Don't forget Bayern signed uh, Sanio Mane too from Liverpool uh, last year. So they're like beefing up. They're they want to they want another Champions League. They want another star on their chest. So let's see if they can get it done for you. I would love that. Absolutely love that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our Bodog best bets. And for those of you who don't, don't know. You go to www.westcoastsportsjunkies.ca, scroll down to the bottom where you can see the Bodog icon, click on the link, and it will take you to the Bodog sign-in forum. If it's your first time to sign in and your first time creating an account, you can enter up to $400 and Bodog will match that $400 only from the westcoastsportsjunkies.ca website. So do that. You'll get buy-in for 400. You get to play with 800. Take it as a win-win. Buy-in and cash out. I don't know. Can you do that? <laughs> Maybe you can. I'm not sure. Have a look. <laughs> Try it out. You know, get yourself 400 bucks. Um, all right. Time for our best bets. So um, I, in honor of uh, the Money Mike, I'm going to make a wager on the bc lions uh the bc lions against the winnipeg blue bombers or blue ballers um <laughs> have you guys ever been to winnipeg no but remember we talked about it we're gonna go to a game next year on our junkies oh, road trip man. oh god and i want to go and, in the dead of winter oh god you, you better <laughs> go to edmonton man <laughs> we've already Anyways, been there uh, at go least it's Canadian closer cities. it's closer i don't mind What's closer? Edmonton. Oh, then Winnipeg. Yeah. I thought you were saying I was yeah. going to give you a geography lesson here. But... Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take the uh, Lions who are plus 165. So I will make a minus bet. 165. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Favorites, minus, favorites. One, minus 165. Yeah. Minus 165. BC Lions. I think they're on a tear right now. Um, they are the class of the CFL. How things change overnight with that league. It's unreal. Um, so that's going to be my bet. Dirty Dan, what do you got? I'm taking it to the track, boys. Formula One, the Austrian Grand Prix. Um, I've been just, you know, getting into Formula Formula One this uh, this year with a little bit of fantasy and I'll ties in it. And I'm going to go with my man, Charles Leclerc, driving his Ferrari. I hope to God the thing doesn't break down. 
Like talk about a car that can't even start. Ferrari, can you imagine that? Anyways, he's been, uh, you know, lighting it up. A couple of bad weeks. My guy, he's coming back. He's going to win it. Plus 250 um, for Leclerc to win. Boom. Nice, man. You know, it's, uh, you know, desperate times. We're betting on the CFL, <laughs> Formula One. And now where I'm going to uh, the grass courts of Wimbledon, where I am taking a heavy favorite, the GOAT of tennis. He is, uh, he's got tied for the most grand slams ever. Rafael Nadal, he's minus 275. Yes, it's a big favorite. Um, but, you know, he's, uh, he's playing a lesser known guy named Taylor Fritz. Um, and he's going to, he's probably going to win, I would say, in four sets. Uh, but he will definitely advance to the next round. And, you know, I hope he is, uh, he's in the finals maybe against uh, Djokovic. Uh, they've had a great rivalry over the years. So, there you have it. Tennis, CFL, and Formula One. Wow. Die, as you just mentioned tennis, I had to pull that up because I was like, I didn't even think about uh, Wimbledon. Djokovic is minus 1,600. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell is he Smash playing? <laughs> Cameron I mean, Norrie. There minus you go. 1,600. You were just talking about, well, he's a heavy favorite, 275 for Nadal. And I looked at Djokovic and he's minus 1,600. Well, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Yeah, man, tennis, there's, uh, you know, there's some crazy odds unless you get to the finals where it's a little closer. It's not something I often bet on, but we'll give it a shot this week. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our show for this evening, episode 63, live from uh, recording from Langford, New Westminster, times two, and the one uh, UFC update from Cultus Lake. So there we go, folks. Remember, all of our content is at www.westcoastsportjunkies.ca. Uh, links to our Instagram, our Twitter account, it is all there. Uh, please visit the uh, website for any more, uh, or sorry, any of our content. We're also on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and say that you like us. That always helps with, uh, with what we're trying to do here. And uh, coming soon... Not going to say when, but there will be another giveaway happening. So uh, keep your ears and eyes open for that one. Episode 63.